This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net. It is January the 4th, 2018. It is 4 p.m. A new time slot. Woohoo! Ah, Drive time. Yeah, and it's Liz and Company. Hello. Um, so, you haven't been here in two weeks. Yes. Did you run in this cold weather? You know, I had, I think I previously told you I was taken off through the end of the year. And because I was, you know, had right. that, that groin injury that I'm still struggling yep. with. So I saw, uh, you know, my sports doctor, Dr. Leo, and uh, he basically said I should probably just stay running on a treadmill for now because, you know, the ground is icy or whatever. And, and if your foot slips out, that's going to re aggravate the uh, injury. So. Um, been just doing the treadmill since January 1st. Okay. Yeah, you know, just doing well, the treadmill. Two good. miles just back, you know, it's a little slow and doing some weight training. And that's wow. it for now. So I guess when I go back to the treadmill this week, two miles is okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. wow. I, and I'm actually not running two miles. I'm walk running yeah. two miles because I just kind of, you know, since it's been almost a month that yeah. I ran, I didn't want to just like get right back into running some longer distance and, and, you know, get an injury. You know, for me is, you know, still at this age, I think I'm always going to be battling that, that Achilles injury that yeah. I had. And especially the, the groin injury, I just have to take it easy because my first race is, um, I think February 26th, somewhere around there, the chili bowl. And, and I kind of want to yeah. be ready to, ready to go for that. So. Well, hopefully it'll be a little warmer than it is right now. Um, I doubt it. So, well, <laughs> for those of you listening, if you're not in the Cleveland area, um, it is uh, in the sub zeros with that wind chill. So, but we're not the only ones feeling the cold. Oh, right. Yeah, right. I mean, the whole country is feeling it. So, well, they've the whole Northeast, I think, is getting a snowstorm. Snowstorm, right yeah. Now. yeah. Yeah, I was going to contact my brother in uh, Saratoga Springs, New York, but I figured that no news is good news. So, yeah, it's good news. What was it? South Carolina got snow. Tallahassee, Florida got snow. (gasps) Oh, wow. First time Tallahassee has had snow in 30 years. Unbelievable. And this is global warming. I guess. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Well, it depends who you ask. <laughs> right, we won't, right. this, this is not a political show. Um, <laughs> so you have a new guest for us today. I do. I do. Who would you bring I, besides I like Ginger at, the dog? Look at this shirt or this jacket this guy's got on, the Boston Marathon 2017 jacket. Wow. Um, we've got John uh, PR. Pavlik, and I'll let John explain what that PR. I tried to explain, I think, with the first time I was on with Alana when I interviewed the first time, but I think I got the story just off a little bit. I think I did okay, but John also has a special guest guest star with him. Yeah. So, um, although the guest star can't really talk, but you know, most of the people that know John definitely know who his guest is. So, John, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and well, who you hello. have with you? I'm I'm here with Ginger, and she's my running partner. She's a 14 pound Jack Russell Terrier uh, female, and um, we run regularly. And she, I take her into races. Um, and uh, the PR that you mentioned, the way that came about oh, was... I forgot to mention that little guest. Yeah, I brought my little, <laughs> my little PR doll here, and um, there's some stories about that. But the way that came about, I was um, back in 20, I want to say 2012, 2013, I was injured and um, pretty much a good part of the summer. And when I came back, I, I, I was running uh, down Pearl Road in Brunswick, and I looked down and something red flashed by and I stopped my watch and went back and it was a red power ranger. And I, you know, I just thought about it. I go, you know, I'm trying to come back. I'm down and out. And, uh, this little guy was probably thrown out the window by a kid and I picked him up. I go, you know what? I go, me and you are, we're going to go places. And I strapped him to my, uh, fuel belt. And when I got home, I, I took a picture of him um kind of sort of of the way that you would picture Al Pacino and Scarface and I said I want everybody to meet my little friend <laughs> and his name is uh PR and uh, it's uh 
for Power Ranger and any runner know a PR is it something everybody wants? I was want? going to say that goes well together, doesn't? It, if you're a runner, PR. <laughs> well, I've I've taken uh, this Dow with me to um, we, we we made it all the way to Boston, and I've run Boston twice uh, this in 2017 and 2016. Um, but along the way, I had a little bit more fun with it. When I seen Bill Rogers, if anybody knows Bill Rogers from the the 70s, I had him holding this PR Dow. And uh, Dina really? Castor at, nice. in Chicago and Bart Yas Yasso in Chicago. And um, so, you know, then I'll, I'll put this on social media and, and people will get a good good laugh out of it, you so, know. So PR has seen all the famous runners. That's, that's right. Not only John PR. But <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Bill really liked it. He, he kept on just on about it, how, what a great nickname this is. And I said, well, you know, Boston Billy isn't so bad either, yeah. you know. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the PR. So yeah. Boston Billy's good too. But, but so that that's cool. Now, did you? I thought I had seen before that you lost this Power Ranger at one point, didn't you? Or or and then you found it again. Yeah, I've I've lost it a, a couple times, and the last time was on uh, the Hall of Fame marathon, the Football Hall of Fame marathon, and that was really within the first couple miles. And uh, I was uh, pacing a, a friend. And I said, well, I don't have them anymore. She, and she said, well, we have to have them. And um, eventually somebody recognized it on the ground, you know, behind me and picked it up and, and retrieved it. Wow. And I said, boy, you should have kept it. You know, you look what it's done for me. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And the other thing, too, is I think that you actually ran a race before in a red <laughs> Power Rangers suit. Is that is well, that true? Yeah, or is I, that just a rumor? <laughs> well, the first time was at a uh, Medina County Roadrunner race called Run With Scissors. And it was in the uh, trails of Hinkley. And that one I made up by just um, getting a little kid's suit out of Goodwill and kind of using red duct tape and making a suit out of it. Uh, the, the second time was at a Medina County Roadrunner uh, their Medina Half Marathon, and um, with that one, um, you know, I like to challenge myself <laughs> with, with different things, but this was actually a morph suit, they call it. It's a full spandex body suit. Yeah, I, and, I um, that. So, you ran the whole half with that? Yeah, and it, wow. it was probably about 80 degrees, and uh, there's, a, there's, a big, there's a story we have that's kind of funny that I – I had to bring a box cutter with me, you know, and tell my friend just in case I can't get out of the right. suit where where to find the box cutter, you know. <laughs> just so you guys know, we are on Facebook Live. We have a number of people watching us on Facebook Live, but they can also go to newclevelandradio.net and go to listen to and find us on Mixler. So go right ahead if you're listening. And they can also call in and ask questions of well, they PR certainly if they want can. to. Let me give them that phone number. We don't number. want to surprise them with anything. That's right. Don't you worry, can no, nothing, nothing. Well, I had a friend that said that she's going to call and ask uh, how far a 401k is, you know. Uh. So, uh, But I think she was just joking. Well, the number know. to call in is 440-922-6431. So feel free and... Uh, our guest and our host will be more than glad to take your calls. I'm just going to sit back and listen. Well, I had reached out to a number of people to see, you know, what they thought of John P.R. Pavlik. I've got a handful of, of things back. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to read it, but I'm not going to tell you who it's from. <laughs> and I'm going to do like a few throughout throughout the interview, but hopefully you can guess who these people are. I'm sure you can. But So the first one is, uh, basically, when they knew I, or found out I was interviewing, they said, you know, that's awesome. He'll be your most entertaining guest for sure. <laughs> he goes, I met him first when he volunteered at Road Rage, 5, or Road Rage 5K about six years ago. This was pre-PR days, by the way. He was injured but volunteering Mostly yelling, run your tangents. Run the tangents, yeah. Keith. Keith, yeah. run the tangents. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got that one. From that day, he's been my hero because he always encourages others to do their best and to have fun doing it. Love you in a superhero, bro, dark way, PR, signed TDK. So you got that one. Well, he's TDK. He, he has a Batman mask, and he's the, the Dark Knight. So we have a little bit of fun with the superhero theme. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's awesome that you got. I could see you just standing out there saying run the tangents. You know, one thing, because I know, how many marathons have you ran so far? Now, you've done Boston. 
Have you ran New York City Marathon yet? No, I would have to. I, I came within 40 seconds, 46 seconds of qualifying, uh, but I would have to enter the lottery. And um, I don't know if I'm going to, I would have to do that in January here. Okay. Um, but I'd like to go with other people, and that's the reason why I'm hesitating. I'll probably try to register for the Marine Corps Marathon. That That's a lottery also. Um, I ran Chicago, Boston twice. The, those those were the, the biggers, you know, besides, you know, all the Ohio races being Akron, Toledo, Cincinnati, um, Cleveland a few times. Now, Boston's limited, though, aren't they, with the number of, of people that actually run? They the have about 30,000. starts and everything. There's just can't the, ro- the road is narrow. Right. The road is narrow when it, when it starts especially, and, and so that has a lot to do with it. Plus, you're tying up a lot of communities. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so they, they limit to about 30,000, and it's the only race probably in the world that I know of that you have to qualify outside of being a charity runner um, or a sponsor, you know, connected to a sponsor. Right. Whereas in New York or Chicago, you know, you can get in through a lottery, or um, in, in New York's case, you can get in by running a half marathon qualifying time. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Boston, because I think the first time I watched, actually watched it on TV, I think it was the 1996 running, which I think was the 100th anniversary of the Boston Marathon itself. And I think they allowed more runners to come in for that particular race just because it was the 100th. And mm-hmm. they had you know, all the different streets. I think it starts in Boylston, I believe. Or no, Hopkinton, Hopkinton. Hopkinton. And they had like three intersections where, you know, corrals, I guess, at that point, that were just loaded with right. people. And they thought it was going to take probably the last corral that they let through a good 45 minutes to an hour before they actually got to the start line of that particular race. And it's like the same thing with, I think, New York City. Because, you know, no way I could qualify for it because, you know, the qualifying for Boston – is pretty difficult, I think. It's when you difficult. you start to look at the times for, you know, guys our age. They've made it harder. The age. They've made it harder, plus this last um, acceptance. You know, you've always had to run faster than your um, designated time, qualifying time, but this last time you had to uh, run over three minutes faster, almost like three, three minutes and 30 seconds faster beyond your time to get in. Right. So it's getting harder and harder. And the qualifying time, I think, because we're, I think, both in the 55 to 59 age bracket or age category, I think it's, what, like 320? No, it's not that low. For me, it's 340. 340. But in order to realistically get in, you got to, I would have to run a 335. Right. Don't they, and the reason they do that is why? Because they cut off, like, there's so many runners. There's so many people that want to get in, correct. Gotcha. Okay. But it's a well-oiled machine when you go there. They they corral you, and uh, you can't sneak into corrals, and you may be able to move back, but you can't move forward. And um, it's a, they bus you there. It's, it's, it's a big process, but they, they've been doing it so long, and they're very good at it. Mm-hmm. And there, there's, there's probably no better race in the world as far as uh, the, the excitement when right. you get run down Boylston Street yeah. to the finish. Monday Patriots Day, I think it is, when they do the Boston Marathon. Right. And then, it's a late start. Right. And then the um, and hot. the Red Sox play that morning, typically. I think their game yes. starts at like 11 o'clock. So as soon as that I lets think out. the lead runners are coming through, it's kind of like the end of the game, where so all the people that are coming from the game get to see all these runners coming that, through as that's well. That's true. So, you know, I've been into running for, you know, a long time. And like I said, my first race I actually watched on TV was the Boston Marathon. Can you tell me about your experience there? I do have, you know, some comments from somebody that was at the Boston Marathon with you. Um, Is it, because for me, I think just doing that race would just be the ultimate for me. And again, I'll never qualify for it. I'd have to find some other way to get in there. But did you feel that same You'll way. You'll feel it. Yeah, you, you do. For me, when I started running um, more consecutively in 2008, I told myself I'd, I would continue to run in, until I ran the Boston Marathon. That would be the goal. Mm-hmm. And um, anybody that knows me, I'm relentless. I'm, I'm not going to quit on anything. And um, in 
2014, I, I finally qualified. I had to wait like 17 months because it was a, an early race, you know, in, in, the, in the calendar year. But um, when I got there in 2016, what made it fun is I, I had a group of people that I regular, regularly run with, um, and they came. So... Did you all qualify too? Or? Yes. Well, you have to qualify. No, and I'm it, saying about the people that came with you. Did you all qualify together and you all ran the race together? Well, we didn't qualify at the same race. Right. Um, but we all took off at the same okay. time. Yes. We, you know, we were all together, um, a group of us. And uh, f- for me, uh, it was just overwhelming, you know, the, the, the amount of people that if you're, you're in. And it, it starts out downhill and you, you got to really you know take it easy otherwise you're really going to bonk near the end Mm -hmm. and it was kind of warm so uh you know anybody knows me i like to have a little bit of fun with it so you know when i got to the you know the college where the wesleyan girls well you see my little pr doll here and i can show you a lot of pictures (laughs) where you know um were you taking a lot of selfies i'm taking (laughs) selfies with the girls and i have them holding you know holding a pr and um so my goal in, in that race was to, to have fun, but, but to get under four hours, and I did. I, I came in at three. Was that the first one you did? Yeah, it was okay. the first one. Um, it was hot. What was really most memorable for me is after I took those pictures with the Wesleyan girls, I figured I wasn't going to see anybody from my group again. A mile later, I came across Patty Tomasello, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine, and she's very good at downhills. Everybody that knows her would know that. But I'm pretty good, you know, chugging up the uphills. So we're hitting these Newton Hills, and that's the toughest part of the race. Is that called? Is that the heartbreak? Hill? That's heartbreak hill. That's when you're in in the miles between uh, 16 and 20, and um, so we're just going back and forth uh, in this duel in the sun. You know, and there's there's a famous race at Boston, you know, duel in the sun between two elite runners. But we had our own duel in the sun, and, and I'd look to my right, and there she was. And I'd, I'd pass her, and then I'd look to my right, and there she was passing me. And uh, this went back and forth, and it got to the point where, you know, I really had a, a high respect for her because I was, I was ready to drop. I really expected to hit the ground and just wake up and have paramedics looking at wow. me because it, it was really hot, and I was really – exhausted in uh those last six miles and uh but we 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 fought it all the way to the finish you know and uh it it was a lot of fun good memories that's awesome so if you could put in perspective heartbreak hill because you know tv never does things justice like that you have to be there to actually experience it that's hard for me to describe because you know we're on radio or whatever but the only like big hills that I know in this area are, you know, Bellis Road Hill down in Hinkley or what everybody calls Effie, which is, you know, the hill going up. I think it's on uh, Ledge Road. How does Heartbreak Hill compare to that hill? So I could kind of get a perspective on Heartbreak Hill. Well, it isn't as um, steep as Effie. Um, Just longer? It's longer. A lot of people don't even know they're on it sometimes. You know, maybe they're expecting some mountain. Um, but, you know, we live in an area where we got, have quite a few hills. Mm-hmm. So um, I would say it's like um, uh, like kind of running those roads maybe on the side of the spillway at, at Hinkley. Okay. Um, maybe not always as um, as steep but longer. And it, it's it's continuous for... Um, at least um, probably a half to three quarters of a mile, and there's people cheering and there's signs um, le- allowing you to know that you're there. Uh, for me, it's a tough part of the race, but what I did, especially in 2017, um, I get an attitude and I start uh, mumbling under my breath some words, and and I attack, you know, I, I really attack. And that's what, how I get up that hill is I don't sit there and, and feel like um, this is just too hard. Um, I'm going to get to the top. And then in, actually in 2016, what, what kind of threw me is that after you get to the top, you think you're at the top, but there's kind of like another hill there. Right. 
Right. And um, that that that's the one that's going to deflate you. You know, it's a it's a short one, but it's by the time you get to that, you don't want to see no more. That reminds me of the one in Hankley. It's like you know some of those rolling hills up on Ledge Road can be, you know, you kind of feel like you're at the summit. You're going to come across. You're going to go down a little bit, but you do. But then it starts to go up again. I'm like, just, I thought I was just over that hill. <laughs> well, what Boston is is that it's a downhill race at points where it really works your quads. And then when you get to those hills, you know, you're going to be using your calves. And by the time you really get to the finish, your, your whole lower extremities have just taken a beating. And for me, you almost, you know, you'll start cramping up a little bit. So um, in the last two races were pretty hot, you know, 2016 and 2017. Um, another thing that I get ribbed about a little bit is uh, in 2017, I was somewhere near uh, Boston College, and that that group of people cheering there is just as wild as the Wesleyan girls. And uh, it was so hot, I took my hat off and I poured a cup of water over my head. And at that point, Runner's World, you know, they were uh, the paparazzi. You know, they wanted to see PR. You right. know, <laughs> and uh, they took my picture. And and uh, I woke up in the morning, and they. Uh, Jeff Ezak, a go good friend of mine, says we got a star in our club, and uh, it was a picture of me um, wiping the water off my face, and I had my Boston uh, unicorn shirt on, and the, uh, they they were describing what the conditions were as far as heat goes, and they used you know me as their their photo, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, you know. I mean, you know, I. I, I yeah, well, so you were, you I'm not limited to just local here, you know. You're the poster child. That's, yeah. that's right. You know? I, so I have a question for you, and we, we've asked this of other guests before. How do you prepare the day of the race? There are some people who say, yes, you should stretch. There are other people who say, no, stretching is not a good idea. Um, so what do you do to get yourself warmed up before the race? For me, it's mostly a mental game. I don't stretch. Um, what I, you know, when you go to Boston, I was told, especially your first time, you know, enjoy the sights. Do not worry about the race. And if you feel tight, sure, you know, you may stretch your calves or bring your foam roller. Uh, for me, I've had sciatic problems, so I may do some stretches to release that. Um, but other than that, it's it's mostly mentally allowing yourself to know that you got a long ways to go and so you know control yourself early because you know the crowd's going to take off and um you know that i i, I don't stretch myself okay yeah, with, with a marathon you know even i think well a math a half marathon to extent you know if you necessarily need to stretch as much because you're kind of take you should take those as john's saying those first few miles and just just gradually warm up the problem is if you start off way too fast you can never recover you just you just can't if anything you'd probably can't. want to hydrate a little bit yeah. more right. I, and i know for some of us who are novices you know just getting into running you know uh and i've brought this up before if you've never been out you know, in the middle of the run, you didn't, you don't realize that runners actually do slow their pace, increase their pace back and forth. As, as somebody who watches a race, you think everybody's always running at that high speed. And so it's, it's sort of interesting to find out, you know, that sometimes it is better, like you said, to start out at a slower pace. Correct. Because you may, you know, chase all those people up front really well you're quickly. supposed to that doesn't mean i do <laughs> you know i'm I, anybody knows me i you know i'm kind of a person that i have lofty goals and, and what i do is I, I tend to go out quick and and there comes a point in time where um it's crash and burn time but i always felt for me that um you know theoretically if you keep an even pace beginning to end you're probably better off um, for me, if I feel good, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can feel good for a long time. And then when the crash and burn comes, at least for me, that's when the mental strength comes in. And as long as I'm not in pain, you know, mentally, I'm going to fight through this. And, uh, the mental game is a big part of marathoning. 
I, I just can't imagine running for five hours. Well, you know, I, it, you know, some people absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. The course closes after about six hours. Well, see, this is where Ginger comes in, you know, like um, a lot of people running groups. I kind of run a lot by myself and, and with Ginger, you know, Ginger, you know, she had in the month of March, you know, the Boston Marathon was in April. In the month of March, she had 95 miles with me, you know. Oh, wow. So she's quite a runner. Yep. And when you're in a marathon, you're pretty much by yourself outside of like I just explained, you know, my duel in the sun with Patty. Um, when you're in a marathon, even though you got a lot of people around you mentally, you're by yourself. So I think that's helped me that I run by myself a lot or I run with ginger and that way I'm very comfortable in these, these long races. Um, I, I don't need other people. If they are there, actually, I don't want to talk. I, I, to talk is just makes it harder. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to read something else. Okay. <laughs> As well, his friendship is the most loyal type. He is very supportive and encouraging, honest. I met him running and we bonded quickly because we were both trying to qualify for Boston. We trained together, encouraged each other, and were always there to cheer each other on. It wasn't easy for either of us. We had to train really hard, stay focused, and push ourselves harder than we'd ever done before. After a few failed attempts, we both ended up BQing, which is Boston qualifying, at different times. Flash forward to the Boston Marathon 2016, I distinctly remember waiting in the starting shoot with John and our other buddies. You could feel the excitement and anticipation in the crowd of runners. It was John's first Boston and my second. He got really quiet for a moment and said, I can't believe we're here. We made it. I saw tears of joy in his eyes. Moments like these you never forget. I'm so grateful for our friendship and the many adventures we've had. Well, that's got to be Sherry Geiger. Got that right. <laughs> <laughs> I call those those people I mentioned, Jeff Ezak, Sherry Geiger, and Patty Thomas Thomasello, I call my Boston buddies because they, they were the group that um, helped me get to Boston and, and make it make it fun. You know, before 2016, um, I was, I got injured in January and, uh, it lasted all the way to March, you know, with this sciatic and I, I would have spurts of running and, uh, I didn't think I was going to make it, you know, and, uh, they, they told me to go anyhow, but I mean, how do you go if you can't run? So, but, uh, by the grace of God and, and some perseverance, um, I got there and that it was very emotional for me because I, I really felt that after all that, I still wasn't going to make it, sure. you know? Boston no, no. Happened. no. Was, that, was that 2015? 14, I think. Wow. wow. Time flies. Oh, so John, you're not the only like superstar. I just had to show this. <laughs> I ran my first race was uh, 1991, the Revco 10K. Mm -hmm. And the magazine that came out the next year, look who's right there in the center. Oh, wow. With my, with my big mustache and my dark hair. Oh, yeah. You know, now it's got like all full of gray. Okay, you look now, good. We need that on, gray. now we need that on the network. Okay. <laughs> You're going back to uh, Sherry. We ran uh, the Toledo Marathon, and uh, that was in the spring of 2014. And um, I was well ahead of her and, and, and another friend, and uh, then – I started to crash and burn, and she passed me, which was good. And she ended up uh, Boston qualifying. That was her first Boston qualifying in Toledo in 2014. And when I seen that, I was like, oh, no, you know, you're not leaving me behind. <laughs> and, um, and that's what it takes. It takes a, a lot of perseverance, and, and that's why you need friends in, in the running community because they'll push you. And, uh, and, and I like to do that. I'm very motivational and, and, and get people to believe in themselves, you know. It's such a mental game. Now, have you have you ran most of your life, or did you start running at you know an older age, younger age, or? Can, can I used to. Background on that. I used to like to just with friends amateur box, you know, when I was in high school, and 
we would we'd have parties and we would chest box a little bit of face boxing but the cardio you slip every now and then yeah you know that's so, so i ran and 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 I, I was running those hills of hinkley i lived in hinkley so and plus i wanted to lose weight you know you're 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 a young guy and chasing the girls right <laughs> and um so i did you know for about about three years i was running and um, I really didn't know about that there were races out there for somehow that, you know, you, you know, we have social media now. I didn't have other friends that ran. I didn't even really know what cross country was. I was just doing it for different reasons. And then life took over. So for me, um, it picked up later on, you know, with uh, it, it started in, in 2007 and it was mostly for health issues, you know, and, you know, just wanting to get back into his shape again, you know. Were you in relatively good shape or were you, you know? Yeah, you I was, I was losing I was weight. weight. I was, I, I was, I was losing weight. I was going to the gym. I was a, a avid volleyball player uh, playing on co-ed teams for like about five years. And at one of the gyms, LifeWorks, uh, off of Bagley Road, uh, on Engel Road, I think it is, or on one of those roads by the hospital, they had treadmills there. And so I would hop on the treadmill and run because I would get to the you know gym earlier before the games. Well, once the game started, I mean, you know, you're all warmed up, your legs are all springy, and you know, I'm 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 doing great, you know, and then I, I kind of started like running again on a treadmill, then I, I took it from there. I bought a treadmill and started going outside more. Now, like I said, we're we're close to the same age what kind of advice can you give me because you know my times I mean I started running back again in 2012 and I was fast I mean you know 21 minute 5k and, and then just you know had an injury so I got a sidetracked a little bit gained some weight what what advice could you give me to say how, how could I get back into it you know right now well as you know weight, you you have to stay injury free as much as you can so you can be consistent and if you can be consistent, the, the speed and everything will come to you. If you watch what you eat, you'll, you'll, you'll lose the weight and, the you'll, and you'll get quicker. Right. So that the weight is yeah. going to be a factor, of course. you got to have the passion. And a, a big part of it is, is, is motivation. You know, you set goals. Um, the good thing about, uh, you know, running, we, you know, we're, we're talking about the Boston Marathon. And, of course, you know, you know me as more of a marathoner. I, uh, this year, I, I, I hit a goal uh, where I, I hit 25 marathons, but for me, they all were raced pretty hard, um, except for a couple. But in, in running, you know, you, you have ultra guys doing 100 milers. You got people that just want to do 5Ks or, or, or one milers. They're all good. You know, some people I know that don't even want to compete. They just want to run and enjoy their run. So it depends on what your goal is. If you want to be faster... Well, then, you know, you, you come up with a plan to say these are the things that will make me faster. You know, you lose the weight. You use uh, good nutrition. Um, you, um, you, you hit the track. You do hills. And, and, and you try to avoid those injuries by not overdoing it. And, and you'll get there. It's funny because I think it was, it was actually, and I've used this before when talking to other people, doing interviews. I think you were the one that actually told me this when we were trading messages back and forth about, you know, my weight was up. I was, you know, drinking a little bit. Mine's too up too. <laughs> at the sports bar in Brunswick playing trivia. And, and it was John, I think, that actually sent, we were trading messages again. And he's like, you know what? He goes, it's got to be important to you. You know, if you want to go out and run a fast 5K, this is the sacrifice that you need to make. To be able to do that if you're not willing to do that then running a fast 5k is not that important to you and it's right you know i've got to get it up here well as a good example this year especially you know i was going into chicago with chicago is flat and my my marathon pr is is a 330 330.06 and i wanted to get under 330 and so you play a mental game you know why is that important i don't know but that's what i want to do so um what I did is I ran a lot of flat miles, and I was running them fast. Now, I have friends uh, that want me to go and run hills. Well, it's really not a bad idea, but for me to run hills, um, 
I risk an injury. To, for me to go into the trails, I had friends that wanted me to go into the trails. I avoided the trails religiously because in most cases, you're going to be fine. But um, you can't run trails fast like you can on a road, and there's going to be some tripping hazards. So it's almost like you don't want to upset your friends, but you got to do what you got to do. And so that's what I did. I did what I got to do, and... Um, I think the only person I really upset was probably Ginger. She's not too good at sub eight minute miles in the summer, okay? But that's what I. <laughs> you know, I I really respect what you're saying there because as somebody who is a newbie runner, okay, um, you know, I used to look at runners thinking that, and I hate to say it, that I thought all runners were had to be idiots because who would want to run and hurt their body and and sweat and whatever. Um, but then once I started talking to runners and then started, you know, walking and preparing for running, it was like, you know, this is exciting to me. But you're right. It is about where your passion lies. Do you want to be that fastest runner? Do you want to run for the enjoyment? Are That's you right. running to stay healthy? And for me, and I've repeated this over and over again, and so Alana, if you're listening, you know, I still mean this. I don't care how long it takes me to do my first 5K. I'm going to cross that finish line. That's right. And there are other people, like you said, who are going to go in there with that mental mindset. I have to do it in, you know, so many minutes because if not, you know, then I'm not a true runner. You know. Well, a lot of times what happens too is, is people are just so focused on being either the fastest or, you know, if I don't do this, I have failed. You know, but you haven't. If no. you start and you finish – doesn't matter what it's not a, is. an easy sport and you're out there and you're doing something and it's good for you and you really are uh, motivating other people people that you don't even know you you may have an influence on them whether it be your own children or co-workers you, you just don't know I mean that's why I you know had started it because you know, it was health reasons I played basketball and couldn't run up and down the court so you know my my wife was pregnant with my youngest daughter and I'm like I just I have to do this and I just, you know, got away from it a little bit, but I just, I enjoy it. Now, I do a lot of races because I just love being around. See, that's what you runners. like to do, and other people do other things, and there's nothing wrong with, with any of that. You know, some, I really don't run that many races a year. Uh, some people I know uh, don't run any races. Um, a, a Rick Roman, you know, a real fast guy, you know, maybe I've seen him run a race once in five years or something, you know, it's not his thing, but he's a great runner. Also, I think like Roy, Roy Hager, I think he's the one that actually does the race directing of the run with scissors. I think it is. Right. But, um, I don't really see him out there running. I mean, I, I don't see him doing a lot of races. He just kind of focuses on what he does. My first time I ever met him was the Medina twin sizzler. And this was probably like 1992, 93. We ran the 10 K together and we were roughly about the same speed. So we were really kind of pushing each right. other. You know, I never really knew him, didn't introduce myself to him, but you know, I know who he is. I'm like, that's my memory of him was doing this 10K together and just kind of back and forth. Well, see, there you go. And you're, you're talking about somebody that motivated you. And like you asked me, you know, what could you do? You know, there's, there's two great cl clubs out there right now, the Medina County Roadrunners, and a, a club that I was had a hand in, forming in Strongsville, which are the Millstream Runners. Either club have multiple people that um, you can group up with, and they're, if, if you have a goal, they'll get you there. Um, with the Millstream Runners, we have a group of people that are Boston qualifiers. Uh, one gal, she uh, qualified this year, Kathy Lancaster, and there, if, if you want it, you know, you know, there's people like me, um, Sherry, Jeff, Patty, you know, we're, we're going to get you there. You know, we'll, we'll get you there. If you reach out to us, um, you, you, you come to some group runs and, uh, if nothing else, we're going to give you a good push. Right. <laughs> it was, it, one, one race I did, uh, maybe like two, two or three years ago now, first race I did with John, John actually ran with Ginger that race, 5k. I think it was the monster mutt run in um oh yeah in yeah Maria. yeah and john, that's my pr uh, yeah i think john won 
you know, they had the, they had the dog division. Uh -huh. before, and I think John was overall, or maybe second, first or second yeah. overall. He ran like 20 minutes. It was a 20 50. 46 seconds. Yeah, yeah, like it was right wow. there. Ginger, which was probably like four minutes faster than <laughs> by myself. <laughs> I love it. What, what's fun with her is like, the, are those races, like the, the pause for the cause in Medina County, um, that's a 5K. Uh, she was first dog in, got a, a great big basket of stuff. Uh, the the twin sizzler uh, that's that's run in Medina on the 4th of July, um, the one year, um, two years ago, she ran a, a 47 minute with me 10K. And then this year it was about 49 minutes. And uh, but what's, what's kind of nice is the Medina County Gazette sees sees her coming in and everybody's cheering and then of course you know they want her picture in the paper uh, not not so much me hey <laughs> hey we don't we think that's great and those <laughs> of you who are listening in we have quite a few listeners we can tell on this end feel free give us a call at 440-922-6431 i'm sure john would love to answer your questions as would Laz, and i'd love to hear what your questions are because i'll tell you uh, as somebody who is just preparing and learning how to run. And I think this that may sound funny to some people, but if you really haven't run as an adult, it you really have to learn how to walk quickly and then how to st step up that pace to run. Um, I've had a few people look at me and say, uh, you, you, you know, you're dehydrated. Stop doing what you're doing. Um, and I love the fact that there are people out there that can witness it and who can help me because I didn't even realize I was dehydrated, and, but they can see it, you know, in my gait. It's, it's a sport that's easy to quit upon yourself. Um, and I want to stress, you know, because we, we talk about, you know, sometimes how hard it is and you got to put the work in, but uh, we have a lot of fun. It's a very sociable sport in the sense that, you know, Laz knows I, I have my Twice a year in the spring and the summer, I mean, spring and the fall, I do my West Side Market Run. Um, and, and those are for marathoners, but you could jump in at any time. It's a 20-mile run where we run from Brunswick to the West Side Market. It's close to 20 miles, and then we have breakfast as a group, and we do some shopping. It, you know, you find your own way back, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, well, how do you carry those groceries back? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we, we put together pub runs. Um, there's a, a group of... Uh, people that that put together a brewery runs downtown you'll be surprised how many brewery runs there are wow um i myself have created you know like an ice cream run a margarita run and a knox gear nights which knox gear is a, a um a light up vest that they've come out with and um i probably should do that real soon here you know we're, we're still in the darkness um and, and everybody comes out we put a different you know you can load it up with different colors and then we'll go to Winking Lizard, you know, and, and socialize. So you, you need that. Um, in the Medina half, I, I make it fun. I'm, I'm one of the, the, the people that take it a little bit further. I, uh, this year I dressed up as a tiki with Patty Tomasello. And um, so, you know, if you're running with me, you know, you're, you're going to get a little bit more uh, bang for your <laughs> buck, okay? Now you're going to have to do a Margaritaville run. It, well, Margaritaville yeah. is down in the uh, on West Eleventh there. I think that would be fun. With, that could be a marathon run. I think from Brunswick to there would probably be about twenty six miles. Probably right, okay. right. There's, there's the marathon. Hey, got to read another one here. Uh, so we talked about the Road Rage Five K. So this person said that same event was my first exposure to MCR, which is Medina County Road Runners, and PR. It all changed after that. I started going to more events and runs and continued my training. PR made quite an impression at the first Christmas party I attended. The man was hilarious. I could not tell if he was trying to embarrass his daughter and his wife or if he was just being himself. All the runs, all the good times with PR on race day. He's an inspiration when he wore a full body red Power Ranger costume during a very hot day at the Medina Half Marathon really sealed his persona as a great runner and a great friend, a true ambassador of the sport. That could be a number of people. <laughs> <laughs> Chip Jenkins. Okay, Chip. I was, uh, okay, great, Chip. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get one more in here. Um, got your message about your interview with PR. 
I met PR at one of the or one of my first MCR runs. I immediately noticed how easy he was to talk to. He has been encouraging to everyone and all of the clubs. He has a way to make you feel better about yourself and allows you to feel comfortable in a situation that could be painful. That could be a lot of people too. That's Brian. Yeah, I was thinking of Brian on that one. And uh, Brian's come pretty far, and we've run some marathons together. And uh, there was one especially where I kept looking back, and I go, he's never going to catch me now. And, uh, and he did, though, you know, and, uh, and, and, and he's a great runner and a great friend. Well, look at the, you look. mentioned his family. Does your family run with you? Well, my daughter, uh, Katie, uh, she's 20 now, but she in high school, she ran for uh, Brunswick High School, and she uh, was good. She In cross country, she made state her sophomore, junior, and senior year, and um, in track, she never made state individually, but she, she was she was very good, you know, in the 800 and in the two mile. Um, my wife Lisa, she's been very supportive of me, um, and that's important, you know, because I do know certain runners where uh, it isn't supported at home because you know it, it does take a lot of commitment and time. It seems almost obsessive. Um, it doesn't have to be. It's just, you know, really, um, you're, you're trying to accomplish some goals. So, but she runs. Her, what, her problem is she has problems with her feet at work. She's on her feet all the time. So she was having some plantar fasciitis and then um, so, some problems now in uh, one of her toes um, where she's seen a doctor, and uh, she's trying to get that corrected. Did you her just do a race recently? Did she she beat you or did you? Beat oh, her? you're talking about Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you it, were talking about your we were at the Christmas Story run, and you know she's never. That's a, we run the 10k, and she she'll beat me in a 5k, but she's never beat me at that race, and because because I got the endurance, and so she goes, well, I'm just going to try and keep up with you. I go, I go, good try, you know? And so, so <laughs> we, we take off and, uh, I get over to Lorraine Carnegie bridge and onto Abbey road. And I look back and, you know, she, she's less than, you know, she's probably about an eighth of a mile back quite a ways, you know? And uh, I go, well, she won't catch me now because I'm hitting the flats. And, uh, so I get to the house and I come back and I'm on Abbey road. I'm a mile and a half from the finish. And she comes trotting past me. She goes, I never thought I'd ever catch you. And I'm like, yeah, well, neither did I. And she, she passed me, and she stayed 20 feet in front of me, and, and I chased her and just chased her, and, and, and that's where, you know, it, it's hard. But, but, you know, so we run up this bridge, Lorraine Carnegie Bridge coming the way back, and I mentioned closer. Uh, I, I, I finally passed this uh, person in a bunny suit, and I come flying down. I caught her on Ontario and passed her. And I thought the, the finish was going to be on Huron, and it wasn't. When I seen that it wasn't, my heart just sank. I felt like I was going to throw up. She kept on going, and because she's young, she has a kick. And, um, and she came in seven seconds before me, and, and, and that, that red, that pink bunny um, came in like a half a second before me. That's <laughs> such an awesome feeling, though, because I run with my daughter, yeah. too. And yeah. Sam and I kind of you know, go back and forth when we were – both a little bit faster than what we are, but you know, most of the time she would beat me in a 5K, and then I Youth. just beat her a couple of times. But just you know, it just feels so good to yeah. be there with them, you know. Because we did the uh, I don't know if you've ever ran the Hermes 10 miler, which goes no. to Lakewood and back. But Sam and I and Shannon we ran that race this year, and Sam caught me at probably like mile three. And then we ran together for just about the entire race. It was like maybe a half mile left. And she just, you know, went past me a good, I don't know, maybe a good 500 meters or whatever. And we were almost to the finish uh, down in Edgewater there. And she stopped. She stopped oh. and waited for me to come with her so we could cross the finish line together. Oh, there you that go. Is, that is fun. A, you know, probably like that is fun. Seconds or something yeah. Like that. That's really that, sweet. That yeah. My heart yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Katie gets competitive with, with me. We, we've run the uh, turkey burner at Hinkley, and um, 
you know, she wasn't going to let me beat her. And, and that was another one. And, you know, she in college, she doesn't have a whole lot of time to run. So she'll put in a three miler here and there. But because of her youth and, you know, competitiveness, just like me, you know, I, I like competition. Um, so she's not going to let me win. Yeah. Now, would you run out in this cold, bitter cold? Yeah, I do. You do. Yeah. I mean, uh, some people can't imagine, but, uh, you know, I, I wear a, a, a mask that covers my face. Uh, what do they call that? Uh, bak, wa, bar, barkalava or whatever, but, uh, it covers my face. PR outfit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd go well. <laughs> Um, and I, I wear, uh, insulated, uh, tights, but I also put windbreaker pants over them. Okay. I double up my socks. Um, you see this turtleneck, it's an Under Armour turtleneck. It's real warm. Uh, you put a few layers over it with a windbreaker jacket, running jacket, and, uh, you'll be good. So usually if I'm by myself, like at, at Hinkley Lake, I'll, I'll run uh, I always look at it as I'm never further than a mile and a half away from the car because you're not going to get your phone to work. It, it'll be too cold. Right. So um, I'm not big on running trails in the cold, but I have, you know, if I'm with other groups, you know, but if you're by yourself, then um, I personally, you know, don't see the safety in it. Right. Yeah, you, just, you, you have to be careful, but, you know, it, it really, it sounds cold. I mean, it is cold, no question, but when you're out there running, as long as you're bundled up, you don't want to actually get too bundled up because that can right. make you overheat. You know, you, but it's really, I think, you're, the where you're exposed. The well, some people, I've seen exactly. Of people with mustaches where their mustaches are Yeah, right. some people have a hard time breathing in the cold air, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it, it's up to the individual. Um, it's actually, you know, kind of fun when the snow's falling. Uh, the other day, uh, my boss and buddies, you know, Patty, Sherry, and Jeff, we, we, it was about, I don't know, five degrees out on Saturday uh, before New Year's, and we went into the trails. We, it was snow-covered like a winter wonderland, um, and like I make it fun, so I, I brought a bottle of uh, Jim Beam uh, fire, <laughs> fire whiskey, and, and we did a New Year's toast before we left, you know. So, um, before you left? Or yeah, before we took off, you know, yeah. and... Um, Usually we do. Usually we do it at the end, but it was a little bit cold. And and I've done that in past New Year's Eve runs where um, I'll bring shot glasses and, and, and a you know like cherry vodka and we all we all do a toast. Um, I try to be a person to that really tries to make running fun and and memorable. You know, and and, and with the the you know camera phones, you could you could take pictures and post them and stuff. So it's fun. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I want to read one more here. I think this is the last one. John in 2008 at one of my first races, the St. Ambrose Relay for Life. He was a jaunty guy, and we just struck up a conversation. Two middle-aged guys. I thought I was good at talking to strangers. John carried on a great conversation. Don't think he was PR yet. Over the years, we ran together a couple of times, had a beer together, but mostly cracking wise on Facebook and sharing IPA Fridays. <laughs> That's got to be Randy Meir. A more down-to-earth person couldn't be found. I've known a lot of fast runners, including John, and he stands out as he's never wrapped up in being faster than others. A good old-fashioned, down-to-earth, regular Joe, his only fault, rooting for the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> Raised a great daughter as well. Yeah, I mean, He's a Steelers fan, by yeah. the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, Randy, uh, he's a lot of fun. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. Um his best uh, attribute is that he likes IPAs, you know. And <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's been he's been running for quite a while now. We when I first started, I think maybe he was first starting too. And um, you know, I've, I'd I'd see him at the Brunswick Rec Center, and I've seen him at some races. And 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 that's true. You know, you 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 don't with with the running. Um, you always want to keep it real. That you know, you, you don't want to become narcissistic in this sport. You know, you can boast a little bit. You can brag at times, but uh, the, the main thing is that, you know, everybody's going through their struggles. They have their heydays, and no, nobody's really uh, better than anybody else. We're not elites. We're not going to win a Mercedes in this, you know. <laughs> you know, the nice thing that I have found 
um, with all your guests that both you and Alana have brought on the shows is that it really is a community. Um, and you're not out there like some athletes, you know, trying to prove that this is the sport everybody has to do and this is the way it has right. to be done. Um, and I appreciate that as somebody who is a newbie because, you know, it is my desire to do a 5K, you know, this coming year during 2018. Um, and when I tell people who are not runners that I don't care how I cross that finish line, they look at me like I'm totally crazy. Yet runners understand that. And it's a special community among runners. We, we, we tend to like to talk with each other uh, about running, obviously. Um, but, but yeah, you're going to have good days and bad days. And, and you know, it, it's, it's for fun. You always got to remember it's for fun. My big thing, if anything, and, and I, I, I try to not force it on people, I've always been trained you don't quit. Once you're in a race, you know, marathons are long. It could be hot. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ron Ross, has, has taught me, you know, don't let the weather affect you. You, you adjust to it, okay? Um, and that, that, that's true. You can adjust to things. And when I, I had a bad race at Chicago, um, but when I got done, I gave a positive post on Facebook. I said I found the finish. I was smiling. I had my medal. And that's why you need to be. You you can't sit there and sock and and kick a can, kick the dog. Well, we ain't gonna kick Ginger oh, here, but we wouldn't kick Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you. Uh, and and a good thing that I would mention is m mantras. You know, you 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 go into a race like you ask. You know, what could I give advice? Have have a mantra that sticks in your mind. Uh, when when I did a my first Boston qualifying time. My ma mantra was, if not now, then when? And if you let that sink in, um, I had a friend, um, uh, Cynthia Lipinski, she put on a Facebook um, when I uh, was running the Inland Trail, she told another gal, don't let PR um, eat your dust. <laughs> and I go, well, I'm going to use that. And that whole race, I was like, well, nobody's, um, you know, I'm not going to eat anybody's dust. And, and, and then, you know, you use those kind of mantras, you know, that will carry you through those, those, those grueling miles. Wow. I, I can't wait for the, for it to start to thaw a little bit so I can at least get back out there. Me too. And, at least walk it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this cold weather just, like I said, has done me in. Um, but I know I've got to get back on the treadmill and I'm so glad to know that you're on the treadmill last um, because, um, you know, I've talked to a couple other people who are not true runners. And when I say, you know, I'm starting out on the treadmill, it's like, you know, you wimp. And it's like, what do you mean wimp? I'm doing more than you're doing. That's so, true. And I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm doing it for me because, um, like you said, you know, uh, if you don't have a passion in it, then you're not going to do it. You're, you're not going to finish the, even that first mile. The motivation it can be very hard, especially this time of year. It's dark. Uh, I, 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 here, here's another way I look at things. I tell everybody, I go, well, um, Jeopardy's not on yet. You know, they don't quite understand <laughs> that. Well, Jeopardy comes on <laughs> at 730. Yeah. And if you're out running in the summer and it's 6 o'clock or 630 and it's daylight, it's not late at all, is it? No. So basically... You know, all you're doing is running without light. Well, you can bring light. I wear a headlamp, and and you run with a headlamp, and you remind myself, you know, it, it's not late. Jeopardy's not even on yet. <laughs> I, I like that theory. Well, who do we have for us next week? Um, not scheduled yet. Not scheduled yeah. yet. Well, I'm sure there will be I've a nice surprise. Somebody, yeah, somebody in mind. Uh, so hoping, you know, hoping they confirm here well, relatively soon. I'm sure because every Thursday at 4 o'clock, we are live here on NewClevelandRadio.net. John, it was exciting to have you and Ginger here. Oh, well, tonight. thank you. I'm, I'm glad you invited me. Oh. Ginger is glad too. I And Ginger, you've been a very good dog. Yes. <laughs> she hasn't moved, has she? No, she hasn't. She's been licking John like. Um, She's enjoying it. Yeah. Because every time I say run, she knows what that means, uh, you know. Yeah, she's got to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I don't have a dog to run with, and uh, my husband's not prepared to run with me, so um, it's going to be running on my own, but that's okay. So with all that, I'm going to wish everybody a happy new year. We will see you next week, which is Thursday the 11th at 4 o'clock right here on newclevelandradio.net. And when you listen in next week, don't forget to call in as well. Thanks.